I'm Tom Malogany for Inside EVs, and I'm standing here at GM's Milford Proving Grounds next to a Hummer EV. Now this is the rebirth of the Hummer brand. The original Hummer ran from 1992 to 2010. GM brought it back as an all-electric brand, and now we're talking kilowatts, kilowatt hour, watts to freedom, crab walk, instead of mufflers and miles per gallon. We're gonna hop in this vehicle now, I'm going to be with Drew Mitchell, a member of GM's engineering team. He's going to tell us all about the vehicle as we do a really cool off-road and on-road short test drive. Now, this isn't a full first drive, uh, but we are going to have about 20 minutes, 25 minutes with the vehicle to test out its off-road capabilities and then to slam it on the track in the Watts to Freedom mode, which should be fun. However, I was just informed I can't do that. And Drew has to do the Watts to Freedom. They're taking the most fun part of it out of it for me. But anyway, you're going to get to see it. It's all going to be fun. But before that, first, don't forget, please click that subscribe button. Ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. So we're here in the Hummer EV about to take it for a spin at GM's Milford Proving Grounds. I'm here with Drew from GM. Drew. Could you tell the Inside EVs community a little bit about who you are and what you do? Yeah, my name is uh, Drew Mitchell and I'm a vehicle performance engineer. I've been working on the Hummer EV now for about a year and a half. I uh, do uh, vehicle dynamics and off-road type type work. Uh, I'm having a blast. Awesome. Well, <laughs> Glad to be here. Let, let's go and uh, let's see what this puppy can do. Let's do it. So what we'll do is we're just going to go off down here back behind the bus get a little bit of gravel time in here. So go ahead and, and use the boat switch here, turn it to the, you can clockwise or clock, counterclockwise, doesn't matter. But we're gonna watch the animations come up and it's gonna kind of point us to the motor. Right. Actually, we're gonna go to the left, left this time. Sorry, let's go uh, two more to the left. Uh -huh. uh, one more time and one more time. Let's see where we're at. We're gonna stop at these cones. All right, so now we're in off-road mode. All right. Very aggressive regenerative braking. Just on lift off, I stopped in like 30 feet, so. Very so what good. we're doing here is, and I actually might have, that's a good question, I might have one pedal drive turned on. So we can we can, we can can turn it off and turn it on later, okay. what it's worth. Sure. It felt like it was on because it, it brought us to a stop relatively quickly. Yeah, I had it on uh, on the way back to the charges earlier. Whoops, I hit the off-road button, not the settings. It's first, my, my first day here. <laughs> yeah, I've had one that's pedal okay, drive on. That's okay, me too. So yeah, so I actually All find right. it easier to start with it off. But All right. you're in off-road mode. So off-road okay. mode is our purpose-built mode for playing out here, higher speed, think gravel, think running through the desert, mm -hmm. um, somewhere where you've got, you're not worried about terrain as much, you're not worried about rocks, and, and you know, yeah. you're, on a, you're on a dust road, dirt road somewhere. Um, this is a mode that we allow a little bit more wheel slip, a little bit more yaw, we let the truck kind of hang out there a little bit. Mm -hmm. Everything's still pretty controlled. Um, we'll show you fun mode later, but <laughs> off-road mode is meant to be that accessible, I want to go fast on a back road yeah. and have some fun with it. So here, what you do, you got the cones, basically just aim for those cones, Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually going to roll the windows up because this thing has the yeah, it's gonna kick up ability some dust, to kick up right? a ton of dust and rocks. And, and we'll, we're going to just launch towards those cones. We'll do. But first, I want to ask you a little bit about driving modes. Um, is there a default driving mode that every time you get in the truck, it automatically puts you in that yep. mode? So normal mode okay. is what we keyed up in. Okay. Um, you can also set my mode. That's what I And it will key up in to. my mode every time, too, if you've... Right. set it on the previous key cycle it'll stay there until you and it'll stay and that's whatever mode you put yep. it in and my mode can yep. be you what you choose your own steering response you yep. choose your accelerator pedal response okay. the ev sound you choose a few a few aspects awesome. suspension tuning that's what i'm going to get um, to off-road off mode, mode now this. with one pedal driving off and i'm going to do a little bit of a launch here. yeah do a little launch keep it all about right. 50 miles an hour or so and then when you get to those cones just feel free to hit the brakes all right <laughs> so what you see here right yeah it's it is it is a super truck in yeah. that we you know we, we we want the truck to have some character uh -huh. in the mode there and you do have to drive the vehicle there mm -hmm. go back to normal mode you can actually uh -huh. do a normal mode launch here and you'll find that it is just very tied down yeah. we want to keep everything not keep the puppies in the box mm -hmm. if you will we want this to be something that anybody can drive on any road surface yeah yeah um, it had a lot of power it was it has a ton it, of power. It, was, it was really <laughs> pulling on me yep so we're gonna do, keep on going up straight right. here and there's a see that do not enter sign over there yeah kind of up in a tree we're gonna go up that little hill there Basically, we're turn right at these cones. And uh, let me get some airflow going All here. Right. Just get a little toasty. So what we'll do is we'll actually park and stop on the top of this grade right here. If you were back a little bit further, yeah. you'd, be, you'd be looking up at trees, right? Yeah. You'd be looking up a power line. So here, now, at, at a view like that, you're able to see directly underneath you. Mm -hmm. This is the front bumper camera, right? Mm -hmm. So we're looking directly in front of you. 
But if you are coming over a blind, a blind crest like we have done off road, mm -hmm. you don't know what's on the backside. This comes in super, super, super handy. And then not as useful in this page here, but we could show you when we get to the rocks. We do have an underbody camera that has yep. a wash feature. And this one's a little scratched up, but you can wash off, blow off mud. You can see the front tires, whoops, and then you can see mm -hmm. the rear tires as well. So we really would use this in the case of climbing over rocks or logs, mm -hmm. ledges, things like that. And we'll show you that here as we get going. Um, from here, feel free to shift to low range mm -hmm. and get some of that region capability on the way down. You'll just let the truck just kind of roll down this yep. grade. So, still had to touch the brake a little bit there. Yep. I felt like it. So, you know, I don't have one pedal drive on. Yeah. What you can do is you yeah. can also grab the, um, you can grab the region on demand pedal. Region on demand pedals, pedals, yes. And that will, you can do it right here, right? Yep. Yep. And it will bring you to a stop and hold yeah. you at a stop. Mm -hmm. So what we liked about that is you can have all that capability without having to have one pedal drive enabled, yeah. or you just go enable one pedal drive and you have it all the time. Mm -hmm. Wanted to give you the flexibility for all that. Close that. So what we'll do is we'll just keep going on this little two track here. And a lot of what we did, we spent a lot of time really, you know, balancing the, the traction performance, the stability performance, the how to put the power down off road. But one thing we really needed to be able to also give the customer was comfort too. So this, you know, this needs to be a vehicle that can ride comfortably on two tracks like this where you've got undulating terrain you might have divots and potholes and if you can ride any time in a conventional four x four especially anything that's got as much ground clearance as this as much power as much tire as this they're not going to ride this nice we, we really want this thing to give you good motion control good good head toss control right you don't want the custom passenger to be tossed around like the motion go through right here so we spent a lot of time really trying to dial in the active ride control which is the semi adaptive system that really is there to give you that kind of tied down body motion feel. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll stop right here and you'll see some cones here. We're gonna yep. just do a tight turn. You see a bunch of tire marks here? Yeah. Effectively, just kind of cheat off to the right yep. and we want to demonstrate the rear steer's capability to really do a tight turn. Okay. Um, and ideally, you should be able to do this and not get into the grass. If, you run, we, if you run over a cone. Okay. We did it without getting in the grass. That's awesome. Look at this. That's tremendous turning. But what was the turning radius? 36 feet? Uh, 37? Just 37, yeah. 37 yep. feet? That's okay, correct. yeah. Yep. So keep going around So we here. also have a little slalom. So just do a real, start on this side, actually. Just, just, I mean, you can go either way, but this yeah. is where everyone's gone. And one thing we can highlight here is, is you got to go kind of, it's kind of slow, but basically you can tuck it in between all these cones. Yeah, I could really feel the, the, the rear steering. I mean, and if, this is a huge vehicle, and it's amazing that it can go in and out of this. Like yeah, this, this is comparable to most of the cars I've, I've driven from yeah. a turn radius standpoint. All right, so stop here and we'll do a crab mode demo. All right. So, you know, we talked a little bit about rear steer and the power that it has. And we give you 10 degrees of steering. Mm -hmm. um, depending on the mode, you can get not more magnitude of rear steer, but you can get there quicker. So mm -hmm. in other words, we overgain it. Yeah. So in off-road mode, it's a little bit quicker to get to the full max travel in the, in the rear steering mm -hmm. than in normal mode. And terrain mode is even more powerful. So yeah. you really get the sensation of, of drivability. Here in crab mode, we'll leave it in off-road mode. We'll get rid of the cameras for a minute. Okay. So this is the rear steer button. So mm -hmm. it's a nine o'clock position on the switch. You can you can push it once and that'll just disable rear steer, okay. which some people just want to turn it off. Yeah. Um, okay, what we'll do, back on. hold yeah. it down for five sec about right. five seconds. There's gonna be an animation that pops up. And what we'll okay. do is we'll let that animation go all the way around to 12 o'clock. Yeah. Boom, now it's locked in. You can let go of the button, you'll get a message that says crab walk. Crab walk. So now we're in crab walk. So, yeah. Just start to kind of dance across the pad. Just try to zigzag your way mm -hmm. across the gravel here. You don't have, you don't need a lot of front steering because mm -hmm. eventually the oh. front will overpower the rear. Yeah, okay. yeah. absolutely. No, That's really so freaky. <laughs> that is so freaky. We are. <laughs> and if you do just small inputs left yeah. or right, you can kind of get it to dance. Yeah. Like that and then quickly back, and quickly back. Yep, you can kind of get it to, yeah. to kind of wiggle. That is just such an unnatural feeling. <laughs> so cool. People are going to love this. <laughs> so it is a fun party trick for sure. Yeah. We, we, we did Woodward Avenue for like five miles yeah. of this, you know, but, but we, but it's we used it off road. Yeah. Yeah. I, just two days ago, we were setting up the rock garden for this and I got my rear tire stuck in a line. And if I would have gone any further, I was going to fall off the edge of the rocks. <laughs> so I actually crabbed my way out of it. I want to just keep doing straight. this. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And so it, cool. Eventually, you'll see you know, you can you can overpower the rear and you yeah. can steer the front. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's it is very useful off road. Way yeah. more than we 
than so, I had even expected so cool. it was going to be. I would think this is even useful, not just off-road, on-road, like getting out of tight parking spaces and things like yeah. that. Like it, So we, when we were lining up the trucks outside the tent earlier, this yeah. one was at a weird angle, so I put it in crab mode and I just pulled the front over. <laughs> it's, I didn't even I, have to really pull ahead of it. I, I have to try to convey the feeling of this like to, to our followers <laughs> it's so weird the, the vehicle's like i mean it's not going exactly sideways but you just never experienced anything like this in a car I've driven plenty of cars with you know uh rear steering but like this is just such a weird feeling when the vehicle is like going sideways but it's cool and so what's really cool come to the yield sign yeah. and then just try to turn right like you normally would right uh -huh. So, you know, it's just, yeah. it just breaks your yeah. expectation yeah. of turn. It, it doesn't go in the direction <laughs> you expect it to be going in. It's so weird. So try backing up a trailer in crab mode. Yeah, yeah. good luck with that. <laughs> but uh, we've tried so it. It's cool. not easy. All right. So, yeah, go ahead and hit the hit the rear steer button. That'll exit. Um, just hit it oh. one time, and that'll that'll exit yeah. um, crab mode. So now you're back yeah. in just normal normal rear steer. And yeah. Go ahead and go straight ahead here. We're just going to kind of go around the left. We're going to go to the rock garden. We'll do some crawling. Super. Demonstrate terrain mode and some of the... Uh, kind of what we call it one foot driving. It's not this fully the same as an EV based one pedal driving. We yeah. do have some regenerative capability, but we also use the friction brakes to give you that really low speed control. So when you need to quickly stop on top of a log or stop on top of a rock, yeah. you stop instantly. And, and tell me a little bit again, explain the uh, suspension travel in the different modes. How, yep. how so uh, normal mode, you're at just the nominal ride height. Yep. When you go to off-road mode, you stay in that height. Terrain mode takes you up just shy of two inches. And then extract mode is an additional four inches on top of that. So this truck doesn't have extract mode right now, but it would be yeah. an additional four inches above that. Okay. And then if you go the other direction, if you're, we're actually going to turn right at the side right. right here. Basically, we're going to go to this rock pile right up here. All so right. uh, what we'll do is you see some, there's a couple cones right here yep. on the gravel. We'll stop at those cones. We'll put the truck in terrain mode. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So, so go ahead and cycle over. Uh, should break? be um, e either direction will get you there. Okay. There it is, the terrain. Yeah, and what terrain it does, is it, we make you accept it because we're okay. selling you. We're, we're disabling stability control. This is a purpose-built, specific use for off-road type terrain. You know, mm -hmm. it, we're speed limited in this mode. We what, don't want you. What's the speed limit? 50, 50, 50 miles an hour. 50 miles an hour. Yeah, we don't want you spending yeah. time around town yeah. in it, right? So right, one thing you will feel if you shift the drive. Mm -hmm. um, Yep, there you go. Just roll, actually start going that way a little bit. Just kind of drive forward. In front of the cones or behind? Yeah, in front of the cones yeah. is fine. Drive forward, now lift off. Yeah. It brings you to a stop and yeah. it holds you. So very similar to our one pedal drive. However, yeah. the difference is we're supplementing that with a lot more friction than we would normally use in the traditional one pedal. Yeah. Because we need even more precise, yeah. we're talking like one to two mile hour speed control where yeah. when you're up on a ledge, you want to stop immediately. Yeah. And hey. low, if you do it in low, mm -hmm. um, Go no, just go down, down okay. low again and then roll forward you know one two three miles an hour and then come off come off the accelerator it pulls you down even harder really this quickly, is this yeah. is really meant yeah. to be so we'll actually run it in this mode just yeah i think it would be better in this mode yeah and there are times when drive yeah. is comfortable yeah. but when you are on relatively sketchy ledges or yeah. shifting rocks low is kind of nice so just kind of follow the gravel here we've kind of mm -hmm. rutted it up a little bit you can see and what we're going to do is we're going to see these line of cones over yeah. here Kind of hang out, okay, hang out wide, and uh -huh. what we're going to do is we're going to turn in and kind of approach this this row of cones head on. All right. And then we'll select the camera for you. A little wide. There you go. Perfect. So then what I'll do go ahead. is we'll use our camera suite uh -huh. here. So, again, we talked about the 18 camera surround view, which uh -huh. this is very handy on a trail when you've got trees or when you've got a sharp rock or yeah. a ledge, something you don't want to get up into. And, and another thing I want to point out, what's really handy, I just drove the Rivian R1T and they have cameras for the outside of the wheels and it was very effective yep. on the trails, but you have cameras for the inside of the wheels also, Correct. Correct. which the, that, that vehicle doesn't have. And that's important also, because you could slash a tire on a rock from the inside yep. of your wheel just as just as easily. Yep, and that is where, like a view like this would come in, let me actually do this view here. I'm sorry, this screen is really dirty, yeah. but. You can see inside, especially when we get up on the rock pile, yeah. you'll be able to see a little bit better what's in there. Uh -huh. And then of course, the rear is not as critical, but if you know you're about to fall off a ledge, yeah. you can slowly walk it down. No, that's a great view to have. Right? Yeah, so what I really like is when you combine the underbody with, uh, one more time, front bumper and front tires. Front so tire. now I can see exactly what's in my bumper, exactly what's on the tires here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, let's start rolling forward. So what we're gonna do is basically, we're gonna wanna put our front tire kind of on this set of rocks right directly in front of us. And then once you get up there, kind of play around with lifting off the accelerator pedal. Yeah. Feel the way the vehicle stops. Yeah. 
This is an approximation yeah. of two foot driving, like you would do in a traditional four wheeler. Yeah, but it's not. It's really I'm just using my the, the right pedal. I mean, it's it, effectively it you just use your toe after a while. Yeah, 100. <laughs> percent I'm just crawling along these rocks now, and when you back off the accelerator, the vehicle just holds. It doesn't roll back. Mm -hmm. If if this was a conventional four wheel drive, I'd be brake accelerator, brake accelerator. You know, this this just really grabs, lets you go nice and slow. <laughs> Right. Scrape a few rocks, which is okay. Right. We got a lot of other body shielding. There you go. All right. And so basically, you know, we did weeks and weeks of this in Moab, where you, you know, this one you can tell it's actually been pretty stuffed up. You go through, and you, we came back and looked at the underbody shields. I had one shield where I came down really hard on the battery. Mm -hmm. I thought, okay, this is finally done. And I finally. Fine. No, I mean it had barely yeah. left a crease in it, so it's just been. The confidence to know that okay, I'm gonna slip off something, yeah. right? Boom, you come down on it between that and the rock sliders, we, um, you're protected. It said there's five different shields underneath to completely protect Correct. the bottom, and it's completely flat. It's Obviously, completely there's flat. no yep. differential exhaust, yep. anything to get yep. in the way. What are those shields made of? Uh, steel. I'm not sure what type of steel, okay. but a, a nice stick, strong steel. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Enough that it takes two people to drop yeah. it off and hold it on the bottom of the truck. Yeah. And this has been also a fun mode. So this is looking at obviously at the rear tires, uh -huh. where if you are up against the ledge, I did one in Moab where I was up against the ledge. I had this the entire time, so I could just watch this side of the truck, uh -huh. and I, you know, just able to maintain the distance I needed to, so yeah. I didn't hit my quarter panel. Yeah. The, the, this camera system is incredibly effective. I mean, the, it's such a tool to have for all off-roading that you can oh, see absolutely. every angle every obstacle every tree root every rock and you know and there's still something to be said for you know looking ahead right yeah. it's still good to use a spotter yeah. but when you can't see your spotter because you're, yeah. you're looking up at the sky you can see your spotter through the camera yeah. and you can still have them direct you which is, has been super helpful cool. so we're yeah, actually gonna way? go to the left here left? Right. and this will be a cool chance for you to feel um feel the terrain mode rear steering impact kind of do some uh, uh yeah. Oh, yeah wow so yeah. here we, we again we gain it up just a little bit more uh -huh. so the response is a little bit more powerful but when you are yeah. on a tight trail straight or uh, actually yeah. you know this right, way yeah. right. when you're on a tight trail yeah. where you've got rocks by you yeah, you've no, got trees that, you can just dance around absolutely i mean that, that the, the, the rear wheel steering is much more you can feel a lot more on this than i felt it in any other car with rear wheel steering and tell us a little bit about the angle that the rear yep so we get up to 10 degrees, up to 10 degrees. in each direction yeah. so in, in below certain speeds about 30 miles an hour uh -huh. they are out of phase so yeah. the front axle turns one direction yeah. the rear axle turns exactly, the other yeah. and that's what enables a really tight turn radius yeah. We're only and then as 15, we go up in speed they go in yeah. phase we're only going 15 miles an hour now and you could just feel it it's crazy how the back end just dances out when you when you when you give it a little steering input wow so, uh, yeah, so we're going to go up to the stop sign up here, and we'll take a right. When we get to the stop sign, we can exit terrain mode, and uh, we'll just put it back in normal mode. This and we're going to get on some public roads, yeah. and head, or public Milford yeah. roads, and head up to a bridge, and we'll go up there. It gets out of its way. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. This is over 9,000 pounds, and uh, you can feel the weight, absolutely. I mean, I can feel the weight in the vehicle, uh, but it gets up and gets out of its way in a hurry. This, 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 And it's got the instant torque. As soon as you step on it, the vehicle really lunges forward. There's no delay, no hesitation, and this is a pre-production prototype. So a lot of times when we get in these cars, early vehicles, they have delays and they haven't dialed everything in yet. But um, powertrain feels pretty, pretty good right now. <laughs> yeah, and working with that team on exactly that, right? Working on lash transitions and really, really, really working on the pedal response yeah. um, to the torque delivered has been. Yeah. been a there's no low speed motor cogging or anything like that that, that we, we typically feel, especially on early prototypes and even sometimes when the vehicles get released and then the manufacturer works that out. Oh, but uh, at low at low speeds, one, two miles an hour, there's no cogging. It's nice and smooth. It comes right to a stop um, with the one pedal braking. And then when you take off, it's perfectly smooth. So uh, it seems like you guys have already um, ironed out any issues that you might have at low speed. a lot of time speed. working on those. Feel free right. to pick it up here because yeah. it's nice and bumpy and you'll actually get a beautiful pretty good sized bump right here yeah. and it just rolls right through it. Wow. It's, it's hard to see from the camera, but we just went through a really deep dip in the road. And yeah, we felt it, but nice and smooth. The suspension just ate it right up. I mean, you know, this is 9,000 pound vehicle going over a huge dip in the road and uh, you, you barely felt it. Yeah. yeah, to your comments about lash and cog and all that, there has been just months and months of work that's gone into refinement in that space because again, one pedal drive area where you're doing that really low speed stop yeah. and go type driving you really pick 
hung up on that yeah. dash, that cog. And, um, there's been a lot of good work from a lot of good engineers to really nip that in the mud yeah. so we don't have to experience it anymore. Yeah. So we're in one pedal driving now. I'm going to do a complete lift off if you don't mind. Yep. I just want to see how to, I'm going 60 miles an hour and I lift, lifting off 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, stop. Pretty good. Yep, and we yeah. do obviously at higher speeds, you get yeah. we, we blend in more D cell yeah. with, with lower speed. And, and you were in low range too, so you were getting a little bit more aggressive. You're not even in the I, most aggressive side. And, and I didn't use the um the paddle yep. regem. I just wanted to see what liftoff regem was in in uh in one pedal driving. What's the maximum um regeneration that gets pumped back into the battery? Do you know so, what kilowatts? Um, Kilowatts, I don't. We okay. can watch the gauge. Right. I do know in, in terms of in terms of deceleration. Your deceleration, yeah. Then in, in high, uh -huh. in low, with the regen paddle. So if you did all three, yeah. you can get about a little over 0.4 g's of decel, which is well in advance of what the average person will ever decel, even yeah. on a normal brake stop. Yeah. So yeah, we give you several different flavors, anywhere from like 0.05 to 0.4. So yeah, we can kind of keep up speed here, and then on, on this back straightaway, when you make this kind of right hand. Let's do it about 75 miles an hour, okay. and that's uh, we call our ride swell road, where okay. it's just all nice undulation swells. Uh -huh. And uh, I won't even talk; I'll just let you kind of absorb it all. But yeah, about 75 is a good speed for this. And this there's, there's artificial sound in, in the cabin now. Correct in yeah. my mode. If I turn yeah. it back to normal mode, yeah. right. we turn so it down a little bit. Going about 75 miles an hour, and it's a bumpy road. Feels great. Just eating up the bumps. Right. So that's that semi-active damping system we have, right? Yeah. Where it is, it is, it is continually optimizing damping control yeah. for the inputs needed. We also do have position-sensitive damping, so if you're off-road and you're getting towards end of suspension travel, we can actually change the damping at the very end to help reduce the shock. You know, so that like that that hit the bump stop sensation yeah. when you either max out travel and jounce or rebound, we can damp for that as well. So we, nice railroad crossing here. Yeah, here we're going over railroad crossing. Wow, that just that was sixty that, miles an hour. Yeah, a little over sixty miles an hour, and you bar you barely felt it. And I'm taking the turn here at sixty, and uh, pretty so good. So I can do this section through here at about ninety miles an hour. Yeah, but then you start slowing down about here because it does tighten up, but it just it just eats it up. For the really size does. that it is, but what we're gonna do is we'll pull off this little gravel lot up right. here, almost directly ahead of you. Oh, all right. Yeah, right up there is fine. Then we'll do a driver swap. I'll hop in and take over, and we'll do some lots of freedom. Awesome. Yeah, lots to freedom. Some. I'm not allowed to do lots to freedom. So what we'll do is we'll pull up here. We have the whole circle track to ourselves, And I'll just kind of park it right down here at the bottom of the apron. So now we'll we're going to go through the mode. We're on uh, GM's uh, Proving Grounds Milford track. Yep. We're, we're, you know, this is a big circle track with a angled surface. So Yeah, so it's four and a half mile concrete highway, basically. Cool. So I'll do a double push with the traction right. control button. We'll start to play some sounds, a little animation. Yeah. The driver has to confirm that, yeah, I want to do this. You uh, you get, know. Yeah, there's, there, there's, there's haptic feedback, yep. there, there's visual feedback. I, while it's getting itself prepared for uh, for lots of freedom. See the indication here that the truck is lowering itself. Yep. It's coming down slowly. Go we'll forward a little bit here. All right, so now the truck is lowering, uh -huh. and I've got the, um, the indication here. Come on. All right, so now I have what's called the driver coach. Okay. So the driver coach tell coaches me through how to do this. And this is a two-foot procedure, right? Okay. So it's going to tell you to brake harder. That's what it's saying. So now I'm holding now, my foot on the brakes. Yeah. And then as now you I'm ramp in throttle, yeah. you get some sound piped in. You can actually feel the truck lurch or effectively yeah. brake torquing the vehicle, if yeah. you will. And it's, it's basically ready to go. So I can count down. I can do like a three, two. <laughs> Of working with 
the traction team and the propulsion team and the all-wheel drive team to all that comes down to is being able to put the power down right yeah. that's all about controlling slip yeah. putting the torque down so we we spent weeks just doing this just, over and over and over it was a we'll do one more I mean, one I, I, I've, I've just last week drove a tesla model s uh long range the the new one zero to 60 in like 2.7 seconds this i know that's it goes in three seconds this maybe because it's a nine thousand pound huge vehicle feels faster than the model s <laughs> that was nuts it's very dramatic. Yeah. The, the motion, the sound. All right, let's do it again. Do one more here. <laughs> All right, so everything's keyed up. It's telling me to go, so uh, I guess I should just go. <laughs> Sit here at 60, and I don't want to get stuck behind this truck, so I can just get you a know, lane change, quickly get up and pass, and then back over. And, you know, I'm in normal mode, so it doesn't matter what mode you're in, there's always torque on demand. I'm able to get past anything I want to on the highway. Um, you know, obviously, I can, I can, I can, you know, one thing you can do, you know, even at these speeds, you've already demonstrated yeah. this, right? You get the one pedal region on demand, gives me an extra diesel. It works in any mode. Right here, we're pulling about 150 kilowatts or so in this just configuration. Yeah, here. that's great. That's on the display. It shows you how much yep. kilowatts you're putting back in the battery yep. and regen. Which so it does become a bit of a game, right? It's, it's fun a to great watch it. feature to have. Oh, yeah. that's, everyone should do that. And hardly anybody does. So you can see how much you're consuming, and then as yeah. soon as I come off, you can see it turn green. Can you, can you go about 40 miles an hour and then punch it again? Yep. All right, we're going to go do a 40 mile an hour to say 90 mile an hour run right now. So yeah, sounds good. That's in normal, yeah. normal mode, right? Yeah. We even give you a little bit more if you're in off-road mode, or obviously wants the freedom mode to give you a little bit more. Yeah. But for on the highway, passing That's speed's not a problem. Way more than anybody it just, needs. It just moves. You'll be passing just about everybody. And, you know, you can sit here, and I had this this past weekend, just cruising around town, going around with the family, and it's just super comfortable on, on road. You know, it, 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 it's, it eats up the highway miles, the seats are comfy, the ride's comfy, you know, it tracks nice and straight and true. Despite all the suspension travel, despite the big tires, Despite the, the scrub radius and the spindle length of our suspension, which is very aggressive for off-road work, it tracks nice and straight and true. I mean, it's just, it's been a, it's been an absolute joy to drive off-road and on-road. Did you do an emergency braking 60 to zero? Yep. All right, let's try that out. We get over here in this lane, you see what's coming behind us here. Yeah. You can basically light it up and say something's right. in the way. Zero. Perfectly straight, nice and tight. Yeah, I did that one-handed. <laughs> ABS is one of my babies. Yeah. So. No, that, <laughs> Spent a lot of time awesome. working on that. Excellent. <clears throat> yeah, that's uh, that's it. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll hit. I'll drive back. Right. I'll kind of push it back on the on the on the access roads there, just to kind of show you a little bit more of just the the overall dynamics, the chassis composure. And you know, to your point, right? Yes, this is this is a big truck, but it's 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 handling characteristics, it's maneuverability, it's low center of gravity, really disguises that. If anything, it, it kind of fools you into thinking you are driving a, a smaller, more nimble vehicle. You know, and it's, it's very playful character, but if you watch my inputs, you know, I'm not having to really be super aggressive with my steering wheel. You know, I can, I can be very gradual with my inputs. Very, use it very much. I can, I can very position the truck very easily. Four wheel drift. We're sliding sideways at 80 miles an hour. You know, that, 
that that is all the the, 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 the all-wheel drive and the torque control system that's us being able to move torque and put it where it needs to be based on wheel slip and yaw yeah. that you don't have to be super aggressive and jerky you can just feel the truck out and it's very communicative yeah. very uh very responsive and uh yeah i come out here and do this like once a day that's it's awesome. just a blast it was a blessing. Thank you very awesome. much. That was a great, great time. Thanks a lot for the uh, useful information. I'm sure the Inside EVs community is going to really appreciate it. Well, that's it for our Hummer EV first drive review. We got to check out the acceleration, which was incredible. We did some rock climbing. We checked out the regenerative braking system. We did emergency braking stops. We did Watts to Freedom. And of course, we did the crab walk. Customer deliveries for the Hummer EV start before the end of 2021 with a starting price of $112,595. But that's for the first edition Hummer EV. Less expensive models will follow in coming years. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel.